Hello, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon in some parts of the world. Um, in a minute, we're going to start the webinar on drying applications of the infrared temperature sensors. I still see some attendants um, signing in. So I'm going to wait for, for just a minute to allow everybody that signed in to uh, to register and, uh, and log on to the webinar. So just a minute and then we will start. It's nice to see people from various countries, various parts of the world joining. Alrighty, so um, let's uh, let's start um, um, with the webinar. It could be that some people are still uh, still coming in, but um, I will um, I will start with uh, with the introduction and to um, to say welcome to everybody uh, to this uh, webinar. Um, it's the the fourth webinar that we are organizing about infrared temperature sensors. Uh, very pleased to see you all. Um, happy that you take the time to uh, to listen to our uh, webinar. The webinar today is about the topic uh, infrared sensors for drying applications and how to use the sensors to speed up drying applications. Um, let's start with a small part of, uh, of housekeeping. Uh, the webinar today we will uh, have a presentation of about 25 to 30 minutes. There are three hosts uh, today besides myself. That's my colleague from the Netherlands, Bart, and my colleague from the United States, Bob. They will introduce themselves uh, in a minute. Um, after the presentation, there you will have the opportunity to ask questions. There is a chat box in the right upper corner. There is a public chat box and there is a private chat box you can uh, put in any questions that we have, we will answer them uh, after the presentation. Uh, during the presentation, uh, you can download content. We will present uh, documentation. It can be case studies, uh, it can be application notes, tech notes that you can download that are relevant to the topic that we are discussing. And we will be holding some surveys to ask for your input. Um, having said that, let's uh, introduce the hosts today. Um, and let me start by myself. My name is Bram Stelt. I am the CEO of Clever IR. Um, we used to be known as Exogen Global, but as of November 1st last year, we changed to Clever IR. We are fully focused on supplying solutions for infrared uh, uh, monitoring challenges. It's all non contact infrared sensors in various industries. I have more than 10 years experience in the infrared sensor market. Uh, my background is in biomedical engineering, so I have quite a few customers in the, in the medical field, but also in, in printing, uh, drying, curing applications. Um, I have uh, gained uh, quite a knowledge over the last years. Um, I'd like to give the word to, uh, uh, to my colleague Bart. Bart, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Bart. Good morning. And um, I am the director of uh, Large Accounts and um, already more than 25 years active um, with XGen and the infrared sensors. So um, I have an electrical engineering background and uh, looking after the big OEM customers worldwide. Thanks, Bart. Okay. Bob, yeah. um, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Bart and Brim. I'm, I'm Bob Harris. I'm the sales and marketing manager here at uh, Corporate at Exogen in Watertown, Massachusetts. Uh, and we're working for Exogen for 25 years now. I've been working with Bart and his colleagues uh, from Exogen Global to Clever IR over the years and gained a lot of experience learning about applications. I was actually hired as an applications engineer back in the 90s. Uh, I have a degree in electrical engineering. Uh, minored in microelectronics and electro optics, and been studying electro optics and semiconductors for all these years, and putting this uh, education to use and helping Exogen sell IRTCs. And uh, thank you all for attending. Thanks, Bob. 
Um, so what will we be, will we be discussing uh, today? Uh, first, we will go over uh, uh, some drying applications. What is it that needs to be dried? And why is temperature relevant in that? Um, why can, how, how can you use infrared sensors to do that? And why the IRTC in particular? We will go more in depth about the theory behind uh, drying and the drying processes. Um, Bart will present two case studies from the field, actual customers that use our sensors in the field. Um, and then Bob will take over and explain how the information from the infrared temperature sensors can be used to speed up drying processes. Um, we'll conclude with some tips and tricks and then we will go into the, the question and answer session. So to start, what needs to be dried? There are many industries, processes and markets where drying is a, a very relevant part of a process. To name a few, in the printing business where ink is applied to the paper and it needs to be dried. Uh, coating and painting of, of various uh, 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 products. You see here an example of a, of a car that has a fresh layer of, of coat um, on it and it's dried with infrared lamps. Uh, textiles, so all types of clothing that are colored or, or printed that need to be dried, but also in uh, electronics industries where components are, are uh, bonded in a way to the PCB or the PCB is coated, everything needs to be dried. Applications in wood, uh, a small piece of wood that need to, need to be dried, food industry where uh, the moisture content of food uh, needs to be monitored and controlled, and also in the tobacco where leaves have to be completely dry before they can be used in cigarettes or cigars. Um, I'd also like to point out what the difference is between drying and curing. Drying is a process where uh, water is evaporated from a solution. Uh, and this is done most of the times with infrared lamps or hot air. Printing is a very good application where you have water soluble inks so the ink the color uh, particles are solved in a, in a water solution and after it's applied to the paper the water needs to be removed and then you are left with a good printed surface so that is drying curing on the other hand is a process that relies on chemical processes where you have raisins or epoxies or certain uh, um, fluid materials that harden out, that cure when it's illuminated by UV light. Uh, in printing processes, you see this when um, inks are applied mostly to plastics or, or other uh, substrates than, than, than paper because on plastic, water doesn't stick. But we also see it on other applications and one of them is in uh, repairing sewage pipes. So. Um, if you want to know more about that, download the, the case study that is presented now. This explains how curing uh, plays a big part in uh, uh, repairing damaged um, sewage pipes. Um, a survey now, just to get, a know, get an idea of, of your interest. Is, do, do you have any drying or curing processes that need to speed up? If you could take a minute to fill in the survey, <clears throat> we'd be interested to learn what your interest is. Uh, I don't see, I only see a few answers yet, so please give us some feedback. I see her that you're interested in drying both. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. It's good to get some feedback from our audience to see where the, the interest is. Okay, I see drying, curing, and both. Okay, thanks, thanks for the response. There will be a few more surveys uh, later on. Uh, moving forward. Why is it important to measure temperature? There are two main reasons, and the reasons are speed and quality. Um, in many printing or production processes, drying is the speed limiting step. So if you would be able to increase the drying or the curing speed, um, you can speed up the total process speed and increase the output. Um, and you can monitor these drying processes by, 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 by measuring the temperature. And it's mostly the part of Bob that will explain how you can speed up these processes. But also, if you speed up the processes, you don't want to lose quality. So to 
keep the quality steady or even increase the quality is also something that you can do by measuring temperature. If you dry or cure too short of a time, it affects the quality, but also if you dry too long, if you apply too much heat or illuminate too long with UV lights, it affects the quality. So timing is essential here. Um, and that is why temperature is relevant to, uh, to measure. Um, well, why use an IR sensor then? Well, there's a very simple question to that. It's practically impossible to use contact sensors for this. Um, all these processes are dynamic processes with conveyor belts or paper uh, running at high speeds. So it's, it's totally impossible to put a contact sensor uh, on the target there. So you need to do it without making contact from a distance. Um, and the IRTC sensors in particular, the exogen sensor line, are very suitable for this because they are unpowered. They don't drift. It means they remain stable, reliable, and accurate throughout the lifetime. Uh, they have ambient temperature compensation. So any changes in ambient temperature in the system uh, will be compensated for. The repeatability and interchangeability are, are top notch. And this is really essential in, in these industries. And um, we have models available with built-in air purge to cool and to clean the sensor. And in applications with elevated ambient temperatures, it's relevant to cool the sensor, not to damage it. Um, and also in many printing applications, you see that it's quite a dusty environment with ink particles, paper particles that com can contaminate the lens of the sensor and affect reading. So it's important to keep it clean with an air purge. I'd like to give the word, word now to my colleague uh, Bart, who will go in detail in, in some uh, tech notes, some technical uh, details and case studies. Bart. Okay, thank you very much, Bram. And did you know that the overall digital printing market is growing somewhere between 10 and 15 percent that's huge and with this constant expansion and with the constant expansion and customizing on-demand production and a fast increase in demand for outstanding applications the next generation printing platforms are the technology to be leveraged in order to embrace this growth trend yeah and to deliver this cutting edge digital printing solutions clever ir with exogen specializes in designing developing and manufacturing non-contact infrared temperature sensors and over time clever ir with exogen became the global level standing leading solution provider to the printing industry with these infra with our infrared temperature sensors okay next slide so what you see here is a infrared sensor in it. it is looking at a dynamic process and it can be paper plastic textile but as it is a, a dynamic process how do you measure the temperature of the surface and the only way that you can do that is you have to use an infrared temperature sensor that's what you do so if you would like to know more about this you can click download uh, the tech note and uh, just click on it and you can download it so next slide please so also in these web applications what we find out and that is what we are bringing in also is if you put in multiple sensors yeah on several points because if you're putting on ink it will be wet and if you're going to dry it if you're going to heat it there will be an evaporation um, and because of the evaporation, the temperature will go down. But at a certain point, when there is no evaporation anymore, what will happen is that you, you can see exactly on the, on the point where the temperature will go up. That is the exact point where you know that it's dry. And I can tell you that if you control that in a good way, it's energy saving, but it is also a top quality of the product that you are doing. And again, on this, that's a tech note that we have, and you can download that by clicking on the below button. So if we now go for the future, yeah, we are already for more than 27 years uh, growing in this digital market. And now I would like to show you some of our applications that we have. And uh, some of them are in a very uh, hard environment. And that is, for instance, with a customer that we have in the textile t-shirt printing machines. They have what they call flash cure systems. 
and which I had can have that to 36 kilowatt of infrared lamps to dry it. So here you can see that the T-shirt is coming at the quite a speed, a couple of seconds. So now, and now I want to show you something because if you're looking in this uh, this picture, yeah, in the middle of the lamps, the infrared sensor is because we need to see exactly what the T-shirt, how much heat it is absorbing, because then we know at a certain point, okay, uh, at what point uh, that we can say, okay, stop, and then it can go to the next level, because then we can put the next uh, level onto that. So if you look on that, that is exactly where the sensor is mounted, but the environment, it's enormous, because we are looking at temperatures around the sensor of 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. That's a lot. And what we are delivering is also, we call it sensor Renix. It's a mechanical and the sensor solution that we are combining and that we have been able to solve this, that it will work perfectly under these conditions. So now we go further and see on the T-shirts that are coming, uh, because sometimes they have, and it's a uh, carousel, yeah? And then you can see each uh, layer, the ink is put on it, and then the other layer needs to be dried. And the, the, the thing is quality and speed. That is what we are having uh, with, with this uh, uh, yeah, quite unique application. And uh, we sell this really all over the world uh, uh, to customers who are building uh, these kinds of machines. Okay, now let's look at a, um, another one, and that's uh, the HP digital printers. HP is already for many, many years, we are a strategic partner for HP. And in these machines, uh, a lot of sensors are built in. And the sensors are used to get the top quality that they need and the speed that they need also. The snake that you see, it's a Viper, and the Viper, it's... Uh, Silicon that we use because it has two small sensors in its head and it's looking and it can see infrared, it can see heat. So on multiple points, the IR sensors are mounted uh, in these machines to optimize uh, the quality and to optimize the speed. Look at the speed that these digital printing machines of HP are doing. And it is absolutely at a high speed. So, the looking here, that is, uh, and you can download that application note, and we have put in that because the HP uh, has a huge part of the market in the magazines and the high glossy magazines. And I can tell you one thing: is they all need 100% quality. It needs to be perfect. Yeah, and that is where our sensors are absolutely uh, doing a big job. And it's not only the HP. I think we have about 85% of the world market in uh, the paper printing and digital printing. So next slide. So um, we would like also uh, a little survey. So if you click, click in below, you can fill in this survey because we really would like to know uh, you, if you already are using infrared temperature sensors. Okay, thank you very much. And what I uh, now can do is, because, next slide please, because that is something that my colleague Bob in the United States is now uh, going to present to you because it's all about speed of the system that you can deliver. Okay, Bob, it's for you now. That's right, Bart, thank you. Yeah, speed does matter. And what we're going to talk about here is the speed boost concept that was developed by our CEO and founder, Dr. Frank Pompey. Uh, increase in production speeds through heat balance control with IR sensing, specifically the Exergen IRTC. So the speed increases in stages. So at first we have the current speed of the machine. And then what we're going to do is, we'll, if you can monitor, and what we will do is monitor the product temperature as it exits the um, apparatus, you know, whatever it is, and then you will monitor the product as it's in process. And by combining the monitoring the product input and in process, and by monitoring the product input preheat and in process, you're going to come up with a balanced heat input through IR control. As you can see, these cars are going much faster as you 
can monitor the product input and the product in process and including monitoring the input preheat. And we'll show that with a couple of examples in a couple of next slides. So what we have is a speed boost equation. Now, Frank, you know, developed this concept by, you know, uh, coming up with a bunch of uh, different equations. And there's a paper that we can show you and you can download later. Uh, we won't get into that now. It's, it's only a one hour webinar that might take a few hours. But uh, what we'll do is just go over the basics of the equation. And what it is, it's a, an equation for non-contact IR temperature monitoring of internal temperatures of moving materials that's combined with the surface temperature. And that leads to a uniform material temperature when controlled with the speed boost equation. And that forces the control system to apply heat at an optimally, optimally balanced rate. So the speed boost equation simply is, so we have the velocity of the new setup and we have the velocity of the old setup. So by taking the speed of the old setup, I'm sorry, by taking the speed of the new setup and the ratio of the um, temperature, which is a control loop gain. So you take the control loop gain of the temperature of the new setup and the ratio of that, it correlates to the speed. So we have delta T and what we have is a, you measure the heat source temperature, you measure the product surface temperature, and you also monitor the product input temperature. So by monitoring those three parts of the system, the heat source, the surface, and the product input temperature, we're able to calculate and determine what the new speed will be based on uh, measuring the temperature of those three parameters. And the goal is to keep the equation balanced to within a few percent to avoid any non-uniformity in material temperature. And we do have a white paper, as I talked about, that you can download on the speed boost um, and feel free to download that to see it in more detail. I will show you a few examples. Uh, I don't know if any of you are in the laminating industry, but you know, as you know, laminating, you have a, a laminating sheet, you have a heated roller, and by taking these two sheets going through the roller, you're going to um, laminate by applying heat. So what we have here, we have an existing setup where we're measuring the roller temperature at 115 degrees Celsius. So what we could do is just increase the temperature of that heated roller by a simple five degrees Celsius. By increasing that temperature by five degrees Celsius, we're able to increase the speed by 16%. So you see here, we're measuring the temperature of the laminating sheet measuring the temperature of the heated roller and measuring the temperature of the finished laminated product. And we're increasing the temperature of the roller and we're gaining 16% speed. Next slide. So this here just basically shows you the correlation. So the increase in temperature, the increase in Delta T from the new setup to the old setup uh, correlates to the speed increase. So the higher, so in this example here, in the laminating, if you can increase the heat of the roller by more than five degrees C, you can also increase the speed. Obviously, you're limited to how much power you can put into that roller, but uh, you know it's you know that you, know, you have limits, but you can go as high as you need to. And I think you know 11, 16, 20 percent is you know very doable on most of these laminating applications. So the other thing you could do besides heating the roller is you heat up, you do a preheat, so you heat up the sheet. So in this example here, the existing setup was a laminating sheet that was just sitting at room temperature. So by increasing the temperature of that laminating sheet with the preheat, and we're going up 10 degrees C, we're able to increase the speed by 20%. So we're monitoring the temperature of the laminating sheet and increasing the temperature with the preheat so increasing it by 10 degrees C will give you a 20% increase in speed. Next slide. So it all depends on how much power is available to do the preheat. And in a lot of, um, in a lot of cases, you may not be able to do a preheat. So then the roller, heating up the roller would be a good way to increase the speed. But by either way, by increasing the roller or the laminating sheet, temperature will increase the speed. And telling you know what poor production manager would not want that. I mean, hey, 
you know, we're imp improving the production speed and uh, that's what uh, operation and production managers want these days. So here's another example where we're doing drying. As Bart explained, we have a lot of drying applications out there. And um, what we're doing here is we're increasing the temperature of the um, oven. So by increasing the temperature of the oven by five degrees C, we're increasing the speed by 11%. So we're increasing and measuring the oven temperature, measuring the preheat temperature and measuring the product temperature, three spots. And you're always gonna utilize you know, three IR sensors in these types of speed boost examples. And um, it's very important to do that. So 11% increase here, as I said, you could increase it you know, higher if you can increase the oven temperature even more. Here's another example where we're doing heat sealing. So what we have here is a heated roller and we're doing sealing. So you're feeding that product through in between the rollers and you're measuring the temperature of the heated roller and the temperature of the product temperature of the product. So what we're doing is increasing the temperature of the heater by 20 degrees C and by increasing that by 20 degrees C, able to increase the speed by 25 percent okay thanks uh thanks bob thanks for sharing these uh, uh these examples um i will take over now uh, with the uh, with the conclusion um so what you what, what you have seen is 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 um, basically let's call it a simplified version of the the, the quite uh, elaborate speed boost equations in in the, the white paper you can see how these are derived but i think the message is that you can achieve significant speed increases with relatively small temperature changes at, at certain critical points in your process um, and <clears throat> in a in a process in a machine you might think i'm already running it at maximum speed but we've demonstrated that a few degrees temperature change, either as a preheat or, or in a roller is in, in an oven, can lead to 10, 15, sometimes 20% speed increases. So you can really have more output and a higher quality uh, with these machines if you, if you manage to monitor and control the temperature in a correct way. And in order, in order to do that, you really need to have good insight at what is the temperature at these critical uh, points in the process. And you need sensors that are accurate and reliable and will function and operate uh, very consistently on the various environmental conditions and give you the right information. Because again, a few degrees temperature difference can have significant results for your speed. Um, so our IRTC and Auto Smart IRTC line are ideally suited to do this because of their reliability, repeatability, interchangeability. Um, as Bart explained, we also do customized solutions. We call it the Sensorenix approach, where we combine our IR sensor technology with uh, with mechanical uh, add-ons to to deal with difficult or challenging environmental conditions uh, you can find more information information on that on our website but this is what we wanted to to tell you with this um, in this in this webinar uh, we always go to the to the question uh, and answer session but before that I would like to do uh, to ask you one more question to ask you if you are confronted with thermal management challenges in drying or curing processes that you are seeking our help or a good solution to solve. If you can give us that information, and then if you are, then of course, after this webinar, we will contact you and see how we can help out in that. So I'm seeing not all attendees are responding, so please take some time to, to respond. Okay, I see a few are indeed struggling with some thermal management challenges. Thanks uh, thanks for the feedback. Now, uh, before we go and answer your questions, a few tips and tricks when you want to use sensors in the field, when you want to use starting them in drying applications. 
you have to consider the field of view of the sensor. So every sensor has a certain field of view, a certain measurement angle, and the sensor will measure the average temperature of whatever is in its field of view. So you have to make sure that the target that you want to measure is completely filling the field of view of the sensor. Now, we always recommend for the, the, the best and most accurate and reliable results to get as close to the target as possible. But sometimes it's not possible to get close because of overheating of the sensor, if it gets too close to a very warm uh, heat source, um, or maybe if, uh, uh, if it's a dynamic process that doesn't allow uh, uh, a sensor to be placed very close to the target. Also make sure that the sensor is not directly looking at IR lamps or UV lamps that will significantly uh, affect your, uh, your readings. Uh, as mentioned before, air purge and cleaning is, uh, is always a good thing to do to keep the sensor cool uh, and clean. Um, if you have high speed processes, you need a high speed sensor with a very short response time. The Exogen product line starts at sensors with 50 milliseconds response time. And again, accuracy and definitely repeatability. So the consistency of your readings is key here that you know what you're doing and you know that if you measure now or in 10 minutes or tomorrow or next week, you get the same results. Um, thanks for your time. We will now go and answer your questions. So if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat box uh, in the right upper corner. Again, they're public and a private. You can do whatever you like. Um, if you're interested in more news about this, please sign up for the newsletter. And uh, there's a link below where you, can, uh, where you can sign. And then now I invite you to post any questions and we will go over them. So let's see. I see a few coming. Okay, let's just uh, uh, go over uh, the ones that I have. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can uh, you can see this, so I'll just uh, post the, the question. The question is, how does ambient temperature affect measurement accuracy? Um, I'll ask my colleague Bob to uh, to answer this one. Bob, can you um, can you answer this one? Sure. So, so the IRTCs are designed with the built-in ambient temperature compensation. So if the ambient temperature changes, the sensor will compensate for itself. So it's all built in, it's, it's a tempco, it's an it, it ambient temperature compensation circuit. And there's a built-in demister in the body of the sensor that measures the body temperature. So when that changes, it automatically adjusts so that the millivolt signal coming out does, does not change significantly. It, it will change slightly, but it still will hold the 2% accuracy that the sensor is designed to hold um, with changes in ambient temperature. And also the sensors do have, and a lot of them do have built-in air purge, and it is very wise to use the air purge to keep it at a stable ambient as much as possible so that you really get precision in the measurement. But uh, the sensor does have built-in ambient temperature compensation as well, where others in the field, um, other uh, our competitors you know, do not have that, as um, you may know, and they also are you know, powered sensors as well. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for, uh, I hope that answers uh, your, uh, your question. A uh, few more questions. Um, what are the limitations of this method? Um, well, obviously, it's not possible just to keep increasing the speed at every or the, the temperature at every point and then increase the speed because there are definitely def, definitely limitations. There are uh, limitations, of course, in in what the type of material that you're working with. Eh? In, in 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 case of lamination, you work with a, a foil or a plastic uh, that has a maximum upper temperature that you can heat it to before it starts to uh, to melt or it loses the properties that you are looking at. Um, in terms of ink or paper, it's the same. Obviously, there are limits to high to how high you can uh, you can warm up the, the 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 temperature of the paper or the ink. So, uh, absolutely, there are limits there, and you can also use um, IR sensors to set up that limit as a, as a kind of an alarm or to make sure to make sure it doesn't doesn't um, go over the threshold. Um, but what I what I hope we make clear here is that 
probably most of you, most of uh, have some, uh, some of the listeners today are, are distributors that I know are working with, uh, with other companies in the field. So some of your customers already have machines that they are definitely trying to run at the maximum speed, but it's the small changes in temperature in preheat or oven or roller or IR lamp temperature that can make a significant difference. So they might think they're running at the limit, but they're not. And this can still result in 10, 15, or even 20% speed increases. And one of the uh, case studies that you could download today actually explains how a customer in the field um, used exactly this technology with a preheat and they reached a 15% speed increase. Um, let's see, I have another question here. Maybe that's a good one also for, uh, for Bob. The question is, I work in a different market. Do you have experience with speed boosts in the different markets like automotive or medical? Yeah, I mean we're we're in medical diagnostic, um, measuring fluid temperature. We measure skin temperature, um, automotive drying. We do portable drying um, in cars. You know, it, um, when you take your car, to, if your car is in an accident and you need to have the car repainted, there are portable dryers that uh, that are used to you know heat and uh, dry the paint um, spot on. And our IR sensors are used there, so that's you know very important to have speed there because you're you know that it's about throughput, and you know throughput is is money. So you you know you want to make sure that you're getting the product through quickly, and uh, you know the and the IR sensors are very uh, useful in doing that. Um, can I uh, can I add something uh, to that? Is that okay, Bram? Because um, I see it in, in this way, we deliver sensors for even for satellites, yeah, that are in space, and we deliver sensors for, to measure the temperature of an egg, yeah, if it uh, if there is a, if it's a, uh, an egg with a, a chicken in it or not, and everything between in the industry, it's where we can use and have applications in this in this field with the infrared sensors. Thanks, uh, Bart. Thanks for that uh, that addition. Uh, for now, I have two, two more questions um, that uh, that we can answer. Uh, the first one, maybe Bart, that's uh, that's a nice one for you to um, uh, to answer because this is in line with what we did for uh, for Zycon that you explained. And the, the question is, um, for the dry out point, how many sensors do you need in a system to measure the dry out point? The, that depends on a little on the application. What we have been doing when we are in an R&D application with customers, many times we put in multiple sensors. And sometimes it will go up to 50 sensors in one machine. You don't need that, but what they are then doing is taking out sensors and see what the difference is. Yeah, and, and where a point is where the, the dry out point is coming. And we have been doing that, for instance, uh, um, with uh, Zycon uh, that uh, was part of ACFA. And uh, we put in uh, more than 15 sensors, and at the end, we stopped at six. So uh, with six sensors, they could do the job. So it depends on test it, use a lot of sensors, because then you get the exact result what you want, and then just take out sensors if it uh, doesn't uh, bring anything at that point. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you, Bart. Um, last question, and this is the question that we get uh, every webinar that we organize. Um, what are the costs for your sensor? Um, well, we have many different models depending on the application, depending on temperature range, how much uh, space is available. Uh, but let's, let's say that with our smallest um, sensor, the micro ITC, it starts at around $120. Um, you can have this with uh, with AirPerch, uh, and from that we have other models like the O1, uh, the standard IRTC. Um, uh, but it is all very cost efficient, uh, affordable, uh, especially if you realize the upside and the additional 
return on investment or profits if you manage to increase the speed of your system with 10 or 15 percent that's uh, then 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 it's definitely a no-brainer to invest in uh, in a good reliable sensor technology so i am um, i hope that answered uh, the questions um, that brings us to the end of the webinar before you guys leave and enjoy the rest of your day i would like to ask you if this webinar was interesting for you to get a feedback on if we're on the right track if we're giving you the right information so please let us know what you thought and again if you haven't done it yet sign in for our newsletter and then uh, you will get the invitation for our next webinar we don't have a date yet uh, but it will come probably in a month or three or so okay um thank you all for um for joining um yeah the people that uh, have indicated that they have thermal management challenges we will be in contact to see if we can help you out and for now thanks um enjoy the rest of your day and uh, bye bye okay bye bye thank you thank you bye bye